someone we talk a lot about is, is Terrence McKenna. Um, in, in many respects, like he had he threw out a lot of ideas, and, yeah. and many of those were, I think, quite deep and, and profound mm-hmm. in in some of their insights that have been unpacked later. One of the talks uh, on his, when he spoke of the I Ching or the I Ching, he was speaking of this notion of the West having been effectively focused on mastering matter and energy mm-hmm. and the control of like that essential nature of of what is seemingly fixed mm-hmm. um and boiling it down to its most uh its most essential parts its most like the smallest component atoms atomos right yes uh whereas the east was far more focused on the notion of time or flows or mm. process or unfolding yes. and they they focus very much on mastering um, this idea of process dynamics over time right and created very specialized tools for for thinking of of those types of structures. So like, is that a fair characterization as well? Like this idea of like essentialism in the West and and like dynamism in the East? Is that a, a decent yeah, way to think yeah. of it? Yeah, I think that distinction is really key. And um, I mean, the way that I look at it is more uh, in terms of, and um, sort of as Terrence McKenna said, like um, the, you've got sort of stuff and you've got the ways in which stuff relates to other stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and one of the things that got me most excited as, as I sort of did the research for this book is at the same time I was re- reading the history, I was looking at modern um, scientific insights. And as you're uh, very familiar with, there's these kind of new sciences of connectivity, if you mm-hmm. will. And you see that in systems thinking, yeah. see that in complexity theory, yeah. see that in systems biology, mm-hmm. uh, chaos theory, all of these different and really rigorous sciences of connectivity look not so much at the stuff but the connections between things like network theory looking at how things relate to each other as being what is sometimes if not either as important or even more important than what the stuff itself is made out of Mm -hmm. looking for universal principles Mm -hmm. so that you see uh, principles of connectivity say in neurons in the brain you see in galaxies and you see in ecosystems and all around us and so many things like fractality is one yes. example scalability etc yeah. um so you see that and then what i was discovering is uh in traditional chinese thought as it led to the deeper and deeper understanding of this kind of sense of of connectivity that web of life um Around about a thousand years ago, during the Neo-Confucian era, Mm -hmm. what's known as the Song Dynasty, Mm -hmm. there was this amazing synthesis of three great traditions of thought. There was um, Taoism, which was very much focused on understanding um, the Tao as this kind of mysterious way in which nature manifested in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, You had Buddhism, which had become very prevalent in China, Mm -hmm. which focused a lot on that recognition of the interdependence of all reality. Um, and then you had, and also focusing on the practice of using meditation as a way of getting in touch with that. Mm-hmm. And then you had Confucianism, this traditional Chinese way of looking at humans as being deeply embedded in society mm-hmm. um, and in the world in that respect. But they fused all of these three things. The, the irony is they thought they were rejecting Taoism and Buddhism and trying to have a renaissance of Confucianism. Mm. But because those traditions were so deep in the culture at that time, they ended up synthesizing these ideas Mm -hmm. in what I think is is a fascinating synthesis, which comes back to what you're describing, because they saw the whole cosmos as being composed of essentially um, a chi, which you can just translate in modern English as basically matter and or energy. So stuff. Um, and we know that, you know, from Einstein, you can define matter in terms of energy. Right, right, so right. it's not, you know, that's ind- indistinguishable in this way. So you have chi, and then you have li, which can be best uh, translated as the principles of organization, mm-hmm. the, org- the principles according to which all those elements of chi relate to each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So depending on how they relate, they can either be um, atoms like, you know, this table, they can uh, be o- organisms like us, or they, they can be water, or they can be air, all the yeah. different stuff of the universe. Um, and it's the Li that really determines how that Qi manifests. Mm-hmm. Tell me if this is a decent interpretation or a decent... Um, when I was looking into the idea of Li or first came across it, there's a fairly simple definition, and, and you know far more about the history of its evolution, so I'd mm-hmm. love to hear you, you maybe talk about it a bit. But also for the listeners uh, who don't necessarily have a visual, it's kind of... it's it's 
described as, I guess, the pattern you would see, the pattern of irregularity in like a jade stone, this idea of right. Lee, this, these, this natural structure that you can tell there's a structure there, but it's not like a rational or crystallized, crystalline structure, regular structure. There's like semi-regularity, yes. like an ordering principle, but it's not obvious. A, a, exactly. Yeah. Those were the very earliest references to this notion of Lee, um, or that also was described as like the ways in which um, sort of fields were cultivated or whatever. So mm. these kind of patterns of uh, of cultivation or whatever like that. So yeah, those are that's the original um, where that sort of word originally came from. You say cultivation, um, human cultivation of the land. Yeah, so I, they were already yeah, drawing so those were, parallels between like um, deep natural structures and yeah, human behavior. exactly, exactly. So it's kind of interesting to to see that. Um, but I think um, the the way in which I like to sort of explain. Um, the way in which I sort of understand how the Neo-Confucians saw Lee is just to think of something simple like, say, a candle flame. And, you know, when we look at a candle flame, you know, we know that the chi, if you will, the stuff it's comprised of is things like there's the wax that's burning, there's the wick, there's the oxygen that's, uh, that's causing this kind of nonsense, and then there's molecules that get very heated, and that forms the flame. So that's the, that's the chi, that's the stuff. But we also see that that flame is relatively stable mm -hmm. over time. You can look at it a few seconds later, you see the same flame. But the molecules in that flame are all different right, right. than they were before. So what is it that makes the flame the same as it was a few seconds earlier? It's yeah. the Lee. It's the principles. There's a relatively stable uh, set of interactions between the stuff that makes that stable. And what's so amazing is that we can recognize that's true of ourselves. Like, imagine a photograph of yourself when you were a, a, a little child. And you can look at that picture, and you know that that's you. You know, there's no question about it. But it, it, if when you realize that most of the cells in that little kid are no longer around, and even there are some cells that stay in us all of our lives, they're continually changing. So you can know for a virtual fact there is not a single molecule in that little child that's in you now. So what connects you with that, with that kid? And the answer is it's the Lee, the principles of organization that were forming that organism when you were a little kid remain stable even while the chi, the stuff that you're made of, is changing and changing. And so in a way, that's where you can see that the, the Lee, those principles of organization, in many ways are more important than the actual stuff itself that they're organizing. Mm -hmm. They're the things that actually um, give the coherence mm -hmm. to reality. Mm -hmm. And you see that in ecosystems, mm -hmm. you see that all around. And that's one of the, what I see so, so exciting is that systems thinking in general, in the different ways it's manifested in modern scientific thought, recognizes a lot of that. Mm -hmm. um, when we look at principles of how complex systems uh, self-organize. Mm -hmm. And the fact that these uh, sages from a thousand years ago were developing these same insights. I mean, one that's kind of cool just to see that. Totally. But more importantly is to realize that they were using these insights to offer wisdom, mm -hmm. a recognition of how to uh, get in touch with deep spiritual meaning coming right. from these traditions. And it allows us to recognize this possibility that we, from a scientific perspective, if we're looking at the same underlying reality, that means that maybe there is no essential distinction between a scientific and a quote-unquote spiritual mm -hmm. interpretation of life. Mm -hmm. No distinction between um, the underlying insights of modern science and what we hear from traditional wisdom. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these splits that we are led by our modern mainstream re reality to uh, tell us are there in life yeah. may not be there after all.